Scott Newman, Christy Rose Fulmar. We're Hello. here to uh, talk about 15 years. Hard to believe. Do you ever imagine we'd be at 15 years and still going strong? Yeah, to tell you the truth, I thought we'd be going for a long time. This is one of those things that had a mystical air about it from the beginning. I knew it was going to work. I just knew it. And I never had any doubt that if we did it and we chronicled it, we'd be seeing major success for a while, a long time to come. And that's true, proven to be true. So surprise has not been one of my big emotions in this thing, but pride has been, and just humility uh, has been, just to think of all the people that have made this uh, what it is today, which is just an incredible organization. I have been saying it since day one that this, this organization is truly blessed. There's just yeah. something magical about it. So can you talk about the idea for starting Rock City? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well Vince was trying to save my life by teaching me how to box. We uh, were approached by the owner of Premier Credit, which is a company on the east side of town. So it was a very nice gym that nobody ever used. I remember getting that call from a mutual friend about uh, meeting with you, having dinner with Scott Newman. I knew who you were. <laughs> I thought I was in deep trouble for something. Yeah. She had the mix of talents we're looking for, it's not that easy to find uh, a caring, uh, knowledgeable boxer to work with people who've never picked up a boxing glove in their life and to change your life and to protect them from falling prisoner to this disease. I knew, absolutely wanted to, to dive into this thing and give it a shot. Our first guest on this program is Scott Newman, who's the architect of this entire phenomenon. I had Parkinson's and I, I, I delayed the diagnosis for a period of months. I, you know, I didn't go to the doctor. And then after I found out about it, I kept it a secret for another year uh, and before I went public with it. Um, it got worse rel relatively quickly. Um, uh, I had trouble writing. I couldn't sign my name at times. I, I had to get voice activated software. And so we, we worked around it, but after a while the stress of uh, hiding the symptoms made the symptoms worse, ironically. And finally a reporter just flat asked me, uh, ambushed me and asked me. We went to lunch and I'll never forget it. And then he tells me he has Parkinson's. And at that time I didn't know anybody that had Parkinson's and I did a little research on it and, and um, let's just fight back. Let's just go out swinging. You know, if you don't get better, at least you'll learn how to box. At least you're in good shape. <laughs> I was not that upset about it because I didn't know that much about Parkinson's and I didn't know how deadly and debilitating that it was. And I started to read about it and I found out and I got very depressed. When I first met Scott, um, he, he was physically he was in horrible, horrible shape. I mean, he was unbelievable. Um, he's not, he's half the guy he was now, I, I'm literally.
we took that gym over by storm. It was a very, very active place. We went to our own in-house group of young Parkinson's of Indiana. We brought them in the gym October 14th, I believe it was. Why does my heart Why does my soul feel so bad? Why does my heart And that ended up being a blessing. Like everything with Rocksteady, it ended up being a blessing. We find ourselves taking advantage of adversity. So at that time, Chris Timberlake, who was a volunteer for about three years and also a care partner for Tom Timberlake, decided to go to another gym where she had a membership, Peak Performance Fitness, and ask the owner if we could take some space in his gym because we needed more space. Bill was so excited to bring Rocksteady into his gym and he let us come into his home. And that's how we were able to expand into our second gym. Wasn't this, wasn't this a shishi place. It's a real, it was a real gym. Yeah. It's a real gym, and unless we really made use of that place.
Hi, my name is Ryan Cotton. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer for Rocksteady Boxing. I've been around Rocksteady Boxing since the early days. I started on the initial board of directors in 2008 and served on the board of directors for 10 years. In January of 2021, I started in my current role as Chief Scientific Officer. My relationship besides the board of directors goes back uh, to my father who was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and is a Rocksteady Boxer in Fort Wayne. In a, a twist of irony, I was already on the board of directors for the organization before my dad was diagnosed. When we started Rocksteady in 2006, it was based in science, but there was no science to support what we were doing. There was anecdotal evidence from our boxers of, boy, this is helping me improve in my daily life and helping my tremors and helping my function. But science hadn't caught up with us. In those days, science and physicians told people with Parkinson's, you need to go home take it easy, relax so you don't hurt yourself and save your energy because one of the things Parkinson's does is take your energy from you. With all that in mind and the explosion that happened in 2016, 2017 with the Leslie Stahl piece, it became essential for the organization and science to, to come together and find evidence that supports Rocksteady. Currently in my role, we have a lot of organizational relationships with research and researchers. Uh, we partner with the Parkinson's Foundation, Michael J. Fox Foundation, as well as local universities and researchers around the country that are doing research, developing evidence that support the Rocksteady method. Now that the research has started, it's vital that we get continued support from the Parkinson's community and those that love and support the Parkinson's community to continue to develop this research agenda and push forward the promotion of Rocksteady around the world. As a representative of the organization, I thank you so much for your engagement in the Parkinson's community and with Rocksteady as a whole. My name is Tom Sluss, been with Rocksteady for 15 years. Tom Rocksteady Boxing to uh, one of our current boxers, Paula Thomas. I came to the gym one Saturday and kind of checked things out. Basically never left. You're grouped with people that have the same disease, if you will, that you do. It's a camaraderie part as much as the physical aspect that drew me to Rockstead. It's the daily or weekly workouts of the people coming into the gym and where they can see that they're maintaining their physical ability. To all those that are involved in the Rocksteady program, without your help, many of us, <laughs> excuse me, many of us would probably not be here today. Thanks. Uh, my name is Paula Tomlin. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease for since 2001, so more than 20 years. It was tough. I didn't know anyone else with Parkinson's. I went to a traditional Parkinson's support group where I could see my future, but I didn't want to see my future. I had co-founded a young onset Parkinson's group called Young Parkinson's of Indiana, along with Scott Newman. It was through Scott that I got involved from the first day of Rocksteady. I had never boxed, we didn't know anything about boxing, but I was game for whatever there was to fight back against this disease. You know, if you fall down, people say, just give your hand and say, get up, you know, keep going. It's part of my life now, it's not an option. It's like when I take my medicine, I exercise. I don't have another choice. It's what I have to do and keep doing it. Um, it's a great benefit to people with Parkinson's, and if we didn't have this available, many of us would be further along or be in nursing homes or what have you. So it's given me the opportunity to you know, continue to, to do the things that I wanted to do. Thank you for supporting Rocksteady. My name is Paul Anderson, and I've been with Rocksteady for 11 and a half years. The neurologist I had to begin with just told me that uh, I had Parkinson's and to go home, he made me comfortable. You can live your life the best you can live it. All of a sudden, you don't realize that you've got a, a weak side, or you drag your foot a little bit, or your hand shakes when you're holding your telephone. Parkinson's will sneak up on you, it'd be five years before you know you have it. And by then, if you don't have rock steady, it's too late. Everybody that has Parkinson's, there's a chance for a better life, they just join Rocksteady. And the amount of people that have Parkinson's who don't even know about us yet is 
horrible to think about. I thank you for your support of Rocksteady. It's an important thing in our lives and everybody else's lives, and I thank you for it very much. Thank you. Okay. I'm Charlie Robinson. It's my wife, Diane. And uh, I was one of the original ones and about 15 years ago. Well, I didn't know what Parkinson's was, and so I started reading up on it. It wasn't good. But you guys, I remember you, you showed me how to hit the punching bag, and I was so easy, but I got the bet. Do you remember that? I'm a firm believer that exercise is your only fight. Yes, you have to take the medicine, but you have to move or forget it. It's a social, and it's great for the corner people because we're like our own little group. I am eternally grateful to all the people. Good things happen from you people. Thank you for supporting this gym because it's truly helpful for Parkinson's patients. My name is Tom Timberlake. I've had Parkinson's for 21 years. We were a part of Young Parkinson's of Indiana. Scott Newman started. He told us about him boxing and it was making him better. And I thought that was cool, you know? The Rocky and stuff like that, you know, that'd be cool to hit stuff. I think about a month ago, I started noticing differences. I was uh, getting stronger and staying up straighter. And, and the Rock City is kind of like a family. You know, it's like a support group. The days I don't want to go, I think about the people that are going, and they're going to leave me accountable. I wouldn't have the friends that I have today if I didn't have partners. You contribute to a cure but that's down the road. This helps you now. Thank you for your support. Your money goes to good use. Hi, my name is Doug Bland. I've had Parkinson's for about seven plus years. It's kind of weird, but I think it was like X-Men, are like they're, they're a group of special people and we're a group of special people and we can basically bounce ideas off each other and not feel self-conscious when we you know, talk about specific issues. I mean, before I started Rock City Boxing, I, I, I bought a treadmill and that only worked just a limited number of muscles and no variation or whatever. And you come in here and it mixes it up, trains your brain, gets, gets your right and left, right and left, there we go. Like a lot of organizations, I mean, Rock City needs your support, resources can be limited, like buying equipment, thinking about programs, venues, and things that we can do, having those resources, and every little bit that you can do to help will, will benefit the program and the individuals that are take, take partake in the program. I definitely thank you. Rock steady! It, it's important to build this program because we know what Rock steady can do for someone and the situation of having been diagnosed with Parkinson's and perhaps feeling lonely, perhaps feeling helpless. There's thousands of people out there that are experiencing the same thing. We're all living a day at a time. When I look at the map over there, and that's just the United States, with all the affiliates, if we have these affiliates worldwide, how exciting it is to say, your cousin lives such and such, we can, we can get that person into a program that's gonna really be a support to them. I go places to travel. One of the things we do before we travel is we find out where the affiliates are so that we know we've got someplace close to go. And on one of our trips in Florida, I got this on my 65th birthday. Everybody asks about it and I'm thrilled because Carol is a nurse and if you have a nurse for a spouse, you don't get to do tattoos very often because they, might, they could be unsanitary, be careful. We are so thankful for anyone who has it on their heart to give to Rocksteady. And we are so honored that we're taking some of our money <laughs> to share it with Rocksteady. We're gonna support it to the extent that we can for as long as we can. Rocksteady! Rock my name is Cynthia Cooper, and I'm going on 65 years old. He said, you know, did anybody ever talk to you about Parkinson's? And I said, well, not, not for me, but my grandmother had it. I shoot, I don't know much about it. All I know is she had a wiggly hand. So I started looking into it. I had always been real athletic and kind of always was the, kind of the top echelon of being an athlete. And so I just thought, I'm just gonna beat this thing <laughs> or at least give it all I have. And so when my doctor gave me the final, yeah, you got it. I said, well, I heard that exercise is really good. It's a really good remedy and you know, getting my cardio going, making that dopamine, all that stuff. 
And she right away said, well, down the street is a place called Rocksteady and they do boxing. Boxing? Cool. I'd love to do that. I think exercise is the key and the thing that has helped me the most of everything that I do. I mean, there's so many people in here that started out in such bad shape. And it's amazing the change that they've, they've been able to make. Even me, when I got my arm, was, my arm was all stuck, and I couldn't even put my hand behind my back. I couldn't pick up a bottle of milk. I couldn't button a button. It was horrible. That was when I started rock steady, and I kept on going at it, and I did physical therapy. And within six months, I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> when I started taking these classes, and I saw all the people that were involved in it, all the volunteers and all the people that work at Rocksteady, but I owed it to those people to give 110% every time I came here. People out there that are supporting Rocksteady and that are even thinking about it, and thank you so much. We need your help, and all the people that have Parkinson's in the world, they need your help. Please give generously to Rock Steady Boxing. Let me tell you what it's like. I mean, the doctor tells you two things, or at least he told me two things. Number one, this disease, there's no cure for it. And number two, it's degenerative. It gets worse as it goes on. You feel terrible today, and this is the best you're ever going to feel, and nobody can help you. If that doesn't make you feel alone, I don't know what does. I was in the Air Force for 28 years, so I'm used to being in good physical condition, but I'm not used to having Parkinson's. My husband was diagnosed 15 years ago with young onset Parkinson's at the age of 36. He read the literature, said, you know, you're pretty much going to be disabled in six to 10 years. So he just kind of went home and gave up. Six years later, he found Rocksteady through Scott Newman. And that's the day that his life changed. The idea of boxing as a remedy for Parkinson's is a strange idea to begin with. A friend of mine was a cop, and he was a boxer, and he said, let's just try this, because it's what he knew how to do, to get me moving. And that's how it started. There's tremendous power that I cannot describe to you when you realize what this does for people. Boxers have to work on balance, they have to work on hand-eye coordination, speed, optimal strength, focus, and these are all things that people with Parkinson's disease struggle with. Forward, step! We're giving them an opportunity to fight back amongst other people that understand Forward, what they're going through. We're saying get strong, learn balance, learn how to get yourself up and down. Get down there and play with your grandkids. We don't want people to stop living, we want them to really embrace that they can do things, that they can live. Come on, baby! Shift, 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 you got it! People have improvements in their Parkinson's symptoms, maybe not immediately after exercise, but people who adopt an exercise program, they have fewer tremors, less stiffness, improved balance. You're fighting against the disease, you're taking control of your disease. People go from being withdrawn, being isolated and immobile to coming back to life and um, I think everyone should have a chance to access that. I was worse than this, a lot worse than this, three years into the disease. Now I'm 15 years into the disease and I'm doing better than I was back then. Back then I couldn't write my name. The progression of my disease has slowed down tremendously. This place gives you hope. Before I came here, I would think I was, I'm the only person in the world with Parkinson's. That's not true. We are now a family. We really are a family. I immediately recognize, first of all, I'm not alone. And that's important. What did your friends and family say when you tell them that you're boxing? They laugh. But now, they don't laugh anymore. Hey! We're pretty fortunate to have 
It's a pretty amazing press and earned media right off the bat. I knew it would. Be. ABC News, NBC News. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a double-edged sword. I mean, we were way ahead of the game in some areas, and the media was all over our story. They wanted to tell our story. We wanted that too, because that's how we got members. That's how we, we struck hope in the hearts of that community. But people just assumed we were more prepared for the onslaught of people interested in it than we were. Um, just because you have a news story doesn't mean you have the the infrastructure, the capacity to meet that. I was in the office one day, and the phone rang. I picked the phone up. I said, uh, I said hello, Roger Steady Box. He said, uh, hello. He says, I'm in Iceland, and I want to know where my nearest Rock Steady Boxing is in Reykjavik, Iceland. <laughs> you assume we had multiple locations. And then the Impact 100 grant became an opportunity for us to finally expand. Yeah. We got that in and we got $100,000, which is a lot of money for an organization like ours. And we were sure excited. It put us in a whole other category. It motivated the rest of the community to support us. We were the real deal at that point. Not only did we have growth uh, on the home front, there were all these thousands of people with Parkinson's just assuming that we were ready to help them. We had a much bigger mission at that point to fulfill. Parkinson's disease usually brings to mind tremors and muscular weakness. It's a battle with their bodies as they fight the effects of Parkinson's disease. At a gym in Indianapolis, some Parkinson's patients are discovering they have remarkable physical and mental strength. One man has found a powerful way of fighting back. A lot of people don't know you know, how profoundly affected I am by the disease. That's because what I do with Rocksteady and what I do up here has, um, is pretty disciplined. We have a lot of great people that are participating in Rocksteady Boxing. I'm constantly impressed by how much they have to contribute to this community. I think that with Scott Newman, bless his soul. Robs you of uh, your, your livelihood, steals your hopes, your life. It's hard. It's really hard. It's daily. It's awful. What am I fighting for? Trying to stay in shape. Trying to keep able to walk around. Useful. Yeah, I think I'd be in a wheelchair if I hadn't been coming over here the last year. We didn't have textbooks or neurologists or PTs telling us how to do this. We basically had to learn through experimentation. We began to see people who were at all stages of the disease and at all different levels and all different levels of fitness. I think that's what makes us different. We're kind of a hybrid of a lot of different things, not one thing specifically. We're not physical therapy. We're not just boxing. We're an amalgamation of a lot of different things. Anybody, but what's exciting about exercise and Parkinson's disease is that some preliminary studies show that, that exercise is having an impact on the brain itself. And what we're hoping is that exercise is in fact slowing down the progression of the disease. This program is being enjoyed by a very small percentage of the population. We have a whole list of people that have called us from all over the country, all over the world, and we don't have any answers for them. So unless you're lucky enough to live in this area, you can't benefit from it. If we don't continue to build rock steady, if we don't give it a solid foundation going forward, we're sort of like someone on a ship who threw a few people a life preserver. 
and started to pull them in and walked away. People are meant to be of use. They're meant to contribute to their families, to society. We are not ready to give up. We have to build it. In the last eight years, it's become clear that people from all over the world need Rocksteady's help. Anybody can learn about boxing and Parkinson's, but what we want to share is the heart behind the Rocksteady method, and that there is hope. We have to fight back. We're bringing Rocksteady to the UK. Boom! Rocksteady, Ontario. <laughs> yeah! We're bringing Rocksteady to the whole world. Rocksteady was finally spreading to other parts of the country and other parts of the world. And then one day, Leslie Stahl and CBS World News did a piece about our affiliate in Gleason's Gym, New York City. And the next day, we were flooded with people with Parkinson's who wanted to box and people who wanted to become coaches to help them. And it was at that point then that growth was just astronomical. We literally had thousands of people coming to Indianapolis to learn how to become Rocksteady coaches. Okay, this is a special message for coaches. I, as I've stated before, loved this organization. My name is Peg Sharples and I was the corner woman for Elaine Gust. My name is Bonnie Mace, uh, married to Dale Mace, he's my husband. My name is David Yeaman and uh, my wife, Mary Yeaman, is the one that had Parkinson's. Elaine was extremely involved in party going. She loved to be in the crowd. She used to love being outside. We used to walk almost every day along the canal. She also loved playing the piano. Each time we, Elaine came for class, she would play before class for everybody. We'd have to get there early so she could do that because they all loved it. Of course, things changed when she was diagnosed. And... Before Parkinson's, Dale was a, a lover of life. He did not want to do anything if it wasn't going to be fun. And he made everything fun. He was just a, a rock for me and for a lot of other people. Mary was an introvert before Rocksteady. we go to church, she would talk to some people but not strike up a conversation, you know, herself. She was pretty quiet. My name is Nancy Kressner. I'm a retired RN and I cared for years for my husband, Jim, who had uh, Parkinson's, progressive supranuclear palsy. My name is Peggy Roach. My husband was Bill Roach, who loved Rocksteady. Jim was very active before Parkinson's, and he was also in the Army Reserves for 32 years. He was funny, always interested in everything in life. He was a, a great mentor to the kids. He was a very loving father. He was always leading them by example, always encouraging them not to just be good students, but to be really well-rounded people in life. Everyone who knew Bill loved Bill. I mean, he, uh, he was extremely active. He was a competitive water skier very loving, always giving back to whatever he was participating in. He was just full of life, full of love. A friend of ours at church told us about Rocksteady. The first day there, and within minutes we're on the floor exercising. <laughs> And I thought, well, I'm going to do a little research here. I'm going to ask the guy next to us over here, how do you like Rocksteady? <laughs> and he said, I can't wait to get here. I can't wait to get up in the morning and get here every day. I thought, oh my goodness, that, that's quite a testimony. The atmosphere in there. Here was a group of people, all had Parkinson's. No one looked at her. She didn't look at anyone else. It was like a whole new world. She couldn't stop talking about it. She was so excited. She couldn't hardly wait to go back. You know, and she wanted me to go, but she was really enthused about it, you know, and she says, you got to come and see me, you got to come and see me. <laughs> One of the hardest things is leaving behind the life that you had before, 
where you're trying to get your person as functional and keep them as functional for as long as possible, you feel like you need to belong somewhere. Uh, because there's so many things that you can't do and you can't belong to and you can't be a part of anymore. When he started Rock Study, he was so passionate about Rock Study. It just gave us that hope that his life was going to be still okay. There was something that he could do to help make things be better. You know, these coaches, you guys out there who are doing all this work, I mean, it doesn't just stay in the gym. It spreads out to everybody who's involved and you it's wonderful and I I can always appreciate it. They need somebody to motivate them, to be their cheerleader, to be their mentor, and it's so, so important and the coaches are always so enthusiastic. They're so knowledgeable. You want somebody like that that's really knowledgeable in the type of exercise that is specifically designed to help Parkinson's patients. You guys are the reason that so many boxers get out of bed in the morning when they don't want to and go to a gym and put on those gloves and get in a ring and literally fight for their lives. Thank you so much. Thank you, coaches. You guys are wonderful. Thanks for giving, giving all that you do. Thank you, coaches. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, coaches, for all you do for Rocksteady Boxing. Thank you, coaches. Thanks. Well, hey, Newman. Good job, man. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. With you. Happy anniversary, Rocksteady Boxing. You guys out there, keep those hands up. Happy anniversary. Because. Because.